everyone. So today we are talking about the data analysis that goes with check all that apply in sensory analysis. So if you haven't watched the first video, the theory video for check all that apply, do take time to watch that first because that will be very helpful. But what we're really doing in check all that apply is we're starting to evaluate frequency of terms. So we want to see how many times did our population select for a specific term. And there's a few different uh, key techniques that we need to do. And part of, part of the biggest take home message here is perseverance and problem solving. That just because I demonstrate a certain technique doesn't mean that's the be all and end all. And that oftentimes you've got to be able to have the perseverance to be able to go and look for different techniques to be able to solve the, the questions that you are finding within your, uh, within your experiments and in your research. So we are going to emphasize these two bottom points, but at the end of this video, you will be able to identify when CATA is appropriate for your sensory analysis. You'll define how CATA can help in food product development. You'll de describe what's required for CATA, and really we're actually emphasizing the bottom two. We'll determine an appropriate data collection method. We'll interpret some CATA findings using frequency tables and Pareto analysis. And we'll discuss the use of Excel and VBA macros to facilitate qualitative analysis in Excel. And we will, again, be emphasizing these two bottom learning outcomes in particular. So just a quick reminder, check all that apply. We have gone through and we've listed a whole bunch of different attributes relevant to our food product. And we've got lots and lots of words. And then we give that list of words to our panel and they can check which attributes they think apply to the sample that you provided or their, their impressions of this, the type of product that you'd be working with. And... It often is linked to other types of studies, but it is, um, we will be talking about um, in our next round of videos about descriptive analysis and check all that apply often links to descriptive analysis because it will help us identify which attributes are important. Check all that apply might also link to how much you like a product. And we talked in the theory video about my friend, Dr. Amy Bowen at Vineland Research and Innovation Center and how she was doing a huge study with apples where they listed all the different attributes of apples and then they linked which attributes were showing up in apples and how much did people like those apples so that they could identify which attributes were useful for the apple breeding program. So they could have really... Um, really good apples that really resonated with the consumer. So often in this case, in the case of Amy Bowen's apple experiment, she was linking her check all the apply along with different hedonistic um, measurements so that she knew these attributes are in products that people really enjoy. So I'm just going to jump right out because if you remember from our last time we did We did in Google Sheets, we had a, or not Google Sheets, Google Forms. Google Sheets is the spreadsheet, and we will be going there in a, in a moment. But uh, Google Forms, we were in Google Forms, and so just uh, if, if you haven't worked in, in the Google suite of different um, productivity software, it does mirror much of the Microsoft productivity, but what I like about it is that while it's a bit pared down, we are able to use a lot of these different tools in a meaningful way. So as you remember from the previous video, we had our salad dressing and we had done some check all that apply analysis on our salad dressing. We had some preamble questions related to allergies and participation and understanding the risks and benefits. And then we had listed this whole um, lineup of different attributes we sent out the link to that survey tool and the students in the class filled out the survey and we got some results. So I'm gonna scroll back up here. What we can do under this tab, the responses tab, is we can see some of that data analysis. And it, again, I've, I've said this many times, there's nothing wrong with just taking a look at the data analysis that's provided here and making some good conclusions. But other times you may want to do additional data analysis and 
do a full-on evaluation of the different responses. So how do you do that? Well, up here you can click on this view responses in sheets, and that, that's why I had the, the, the thought in my mind that I needed to work in Google Sheets because we will be moving all of this data over into a spreadsheet format. And so what we've got here is just a tabulation of each of the different responses. So I, again, I mentioned we did this in class last year. Um, and so because we did it in person, I didn't have to make a video, but um, we've got the timestamp from when the people did it. I have no allergies. I'm yes, I'm willing and able. And down here, we've got that question, check all the attributes that apply to this. And now we've got the listing of all those words. Now. I realize right now I've got not a huge number of respondents in this survey. And so in theory, I could go through and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 people responded creamy. And because it's a small data set, I could manually go through and count. Nothing wrong with that, except that if I had, let's say I had 250 respondents in my survey tool, it would become extremely difficult. And so learning how to use these, um, these different um, data analysis tools on a smaller data set is really good because you can manually go back and visualize and make sure that the equations are working properly, get really comfortable with those equations so that when you do have that huge data set with 250 respondents or maybe 1,000 response, maybe, maybe 10,000 response, it's, it's easy to get these surveys up online and get a lot of feedback. And so practicing in a small data set is really worthwhile so that you can check those equations, know how they're functioning, and work from there. So I have actually, what you can do with these Google Sheets is you can go to File and you can, you can download into Microsoft Excel format. And that's exactly what I've done. I'm not going to do it because I've, I've actually done a little bit of preamble work here so that it will make my video a little bit easier. Now, first off, I wanted to talk about frequency. I realized that frequency, I'm, I'm going to be mentioning, um, there is a frequency feature in Excel. And I, I have worked the spreadsheet, and those of you who are in the class at Niagara College, you'll have this available to you in your Blackboard. But uh, what I've done is I've, I've pre-worked the numbers in one tab, and then I've, I've unworked the numbers here. Now, let's, let's go back and imagine I've done a ranked preference. I realize we're talking about CATA, but I want to talk about frequency analysis in Excel. That's really what I want to talk about today. If I want to do frequency, I can go equals frequency and click on there, double click. It says data array and bins array. Well, what I've done is made up my bins. These are the labels that I had on my samples. If I go through here and say, okay, there's my data array who ranked these first, and then comma, and over to my bins array. The bins array just means the data labels. So I highlight there, and it will tell me the frequency. Nice thing is it, it does what's called an array-based equation, and it tells me that I've had eight people respond. One, two, three was their favorite sample. Let's just double check. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight. That's correct. And, and did we have three people respond four, five, six, one, two, three? Yes, indeed. Good job. So frequency works great for numbers, but it doesn't work for words. And I'll just show you that in a moment. Frequency of my data array, comma, and then my bins array. Fantastic. And so I've got three and so on. And frequency, click, and you could see how you could do this really, you could even set it up so that you had a full-on array equation and do it in one fell swoop. Now you're likely saying, wait a second, why is there a zero down there? What this bins is doing is that it's actually saying, I want to look for the numbers from zero to one, two, three, and then it's going from one, two, four, all the way to four, five, six. And so it's actually evaluating the range. And why is it giving this dump at the end with a zero? Because it's looking for anything larger than uh, 1,011. 
So it's looking for numbers larger than that within the frequency table. And we don't have any numbers, but um, it does it does add to the importance of just making sure that uh, you've got good management on your on your uh, on your bins. And now I've got a frequency table. And if you remember uh, from some of our previous videos or some of our previous classes, you could take this frequency table now and turn it into a histogram. And uh, I've, I've shared the a histogram video with you. I have a few different histogram videos actually. And you can make a histogram in Excel and that will let you measure or visualize how frequently each of these responses are. Now, does this work for words? Well, let's go in here and go frequency. And if I go in here and there's my array and there's my words, just I'm doing this just uh, to be facetious and it gives me zero. And you're like, wait a second, I can see that creamy is in there so many times. Well, the thing is, the frequency tool is actually designed to work on numbers. It's not designed to work on strings of letters. And so first, first thing I, I, when I was doing this data analysis, I said, well, wait a second, is there a tool that helps me evaluate frequency of words in Excel? And you're going to laugh. And I know different teachers that I work with are like, wait a second, um, Google is Google's dangerous for students. And I'm like, Google's fantastic for students. I went and Googled, how do I measure the frequency of words in Excel? And up came, one of the hits was from Microsoft in Excel in their office troubleshooting. And it says, if I want to do a description of formulas to count occurrences of text, characters, and words in Excel. And this is exactly what I want to do. I want to figure out how frequently does my word show up in a string of words in Excel? So what I was able to do from here was find an equation. And this was the equation that I took. And I can't stress this enough. Um, I realized that you might not be an Excel uh, guru. I'm not an Excel guru. I just have to go and use some good problem solving, ask the right question use Google effectively, I know that Microsoft is going to give me some very high quality information because they want me to be using Excel and using it effectively. So I took that equation and I just go and hover over it, copy it, and I can take it out to my, the wrong spreadsheet. There we go. Take it out to my spreadsheet and there is the equation that they had on that web page. Now, based off of this, I can go in and if I paste it again, nope, see, if I paste it, it just comes up and it says name. I need to go in and figure out these different, what these different terms mean. So range just means I need to put in the data range that I'm working from. So the data range was this. And Len and substitute, I don't want to put in there. I want to bring back that range. And so I'm going to bring back and put that range back in again. Now text is where I need to be looking for that text. So in this case, I want to put in creamy. No. So range comma text. So in this case, I want to have that is which box is that? Pardon me. That's A B C D E fifteen. I need to make sure that it's there. We go. It's because of the uh, apostrophes that is preventing me from reading it as the text. And then the string that I want it to return is going to be D fifteen. And so how many times did the word creamy show up? It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do white and see if it works the same for white. If I copy this formula down here, wait a second, it's, it's moving my formula over. And so I do need to be double checking and making sure that, see, it's shifted everything. So I need to move that and make sure that it's not 
shifting around. And if you know how to use the different dollar signs, you can go in here and in this case, I want to put the dollar sign just in front of the number because I want the numbers to not shift. But if I move it sideways, then it will. And in this case, I don't want it to move sideways. I want it to just, just move up and down. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Nice. And now I have the frequency of each of those words from my list. Nice. So let's just double check. It was white in there five times. I see white once, two, oops, three, four, five. Five times. Perfect. It worked great. And let's see what happens if I copy this over to my other columns. Nice. Creamy. Oh, wait a second. Creamy. I, I, here's the thing, I've got to be really, really careful to make sure that when I'm moving that equation over that the equation is shifting appropriately. And indeed it has shifted over nicely now. Excellent. So do I have the word creamy in there twice? I see creamy. One, two, perfect. Do I see the word zesty in there three times? Zesty, zesty, and zesty. One, two, three. No more than that. Fantastic. Now I've got a frequency table and I can do some work with this and put it into a histogram. Now I did have some fun and as I was looking around in here, I found how to count word frequency in a cell range. And that, that equation that we just had, it wasn't difficult to work with, but it was it was somewhat awkward to look at. Now, what I found here was what's called a, a VBA macro. And it's it's more or less like a little tiny computer program that is inside Excel for me. And if I just had generic Excel up, it would um, not be able to do the frequency of words. But what, what some of the different computer programmers who are out there have done is they've created this whole community that does computer programming and they write these tiny programs and here, here's the program code and what you can do is you can you can you can cut and paste that code they publish it online because they want people to share it and use it and I was able to go in to Excel I happen to have the developer function on you have to turn this on as it's it's one of the it's one of the options, and it's one of the ribbons that you have to um, you have to customize the ribbon, and you have to add the developer add-on here so that you can actually access the macros and VBA capability. You've likely seen this before when you open a, an Excel file and it says, "Would you like to enable the macros?" Well, someone has. It, it, what that implies is that someone has created a little tiny program inside Excel to help make the data analysis easier. And while well, using that string of words wasn't difficult, perhaps this is an analysis that you're doing over and over and over and over again, and, it, and having a little string of words might make it easier for you. So I, I added the developer tool, and when I'm in here, I can open up Visual Basic, and I can see in here that I've got... I've got a module, and what I what I would have had to do was right click on there, right click module, and go to insert and insert a module. Up comes that box, and you would you would uh, cut and paste that text from so copy the paste uh, copy it here, and you would paste it in there. Now it's already saying to me, wait a second, you've already got it in there, so I'm I'm going to close it and make sure that I haven't added. A new module. You'll note this is the what's called freak words, and freak words implies that I have now got a little tiny program inside my Excel, so that if I go back and let's see, I've got the wrong Excel sheet open. If I find my list of words, I could go in and say, let's scroll down here a little bit. I could say 
equals freak. There we go. Equals freak words. And then hover over and take that array. And then the, the other syntax is that I need to put in one. And that should close off. No, it's got a compile error. See, I've been having too much fun with this. Let's jump out to the other spreadsheet. If I do it in here, I'm going to just eliminate that for a second. If I do equals freak words, double click, highlight my string of text, and I do syntax one, close, it will go through my list of words and it will give me exactly what words are in that list. If I then do the same and go equals freak words, and highlight that same array and comma two this time, it's going to give me my frequency table. And this is the fun of all sorts of different things in Excel. Honestly, I realize that you guys are food scientists and you might not be Excel programmers, but if there's data analysis that you need to do on a routine basis, it's worth going into Google and taking a look. There are VBA communities out there where people just do problem solving and they write. VBA stands for Visual Basic and they write little tiny programs to make life easier. You might be able to find strings of, of code that will allow you to mod um, Excel so that it makes your life easier for being able to do these sorts of analyses. Now what I did just to make just to make my analysis complete here was that I did this whole this whole freak words and I took the words and then I did I did I had to copy it because because the challenge is this is now an array. It's an array and a, uh, if I try and do any sort of sorting or data analysis it it gets smucked up. So I, I just made a mirror copy of just the text and then that allowed me to go through and sort by sort by frequency so that I have sort of a Pareto type analysis and I know which words are the most frequent in my list. So if I if I hover over this list, I did most of them. Um, yeah, I did the first two, but I didn't do the second two. Let's let's do one for you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight my my text. If I highlight the text and I go back to home and I go to sort, so I had to highlight both columns, the words and the numbers, sort and filter, and a custom sort. Now I can sort by I want to sort by column Y, and I want to have largest to smallest. Okay, and so I see that the word white showed up the most, chives showed up, oh, or, <laughs> we can ignore or, but uh, acidic showed up the next most, and onions showed up uh, very frequently as well. And so this sort of frequency table, as we mentioned before, you could be correlating and say, wait a second, a salad dressing one, two, three is the market leader and sells the most market volume. We know that these are the attributes that are the most meaningful to our consumer. And so maybe we're president's choice and we say, you know what, creamy white and chives, or I don't know what or flavor tastes like, but <laughs> I'm teasing. Uh, you could say, well, you know what, the market leader is a creamy white chive flavored salad dressing. We want to make a uh, private label copycat for that? Well, we want it to be creamy, white, and chive flavored. Or maybe you are out there saying, well, wait a second, if we are in the ranch salad dressing market, maybe we want to look and see what of these other flavors are not being served. And so maybe we want to have a bacon zesty onion because it is not showing up very frequently. And perhaps that's a unique angle on ranch salad dressing. And so looking perhaps at the at the data that's not there sometimes can give you the opportunity for innovation. Main take home message is that I want you to not get frustrated and say, well, wait a second, I can't do this data analysis, therefore I can't do it. Or, oh, I can't do this because I have to manually count and it's just too much work. Or, or actually sit there and count hundreds upon hundreds of words. Do take the time to investigate and snoop around in the internet to see what you can find. Hey, my phone is ringing and 
I'm going to hang up on it <laughs> and close off this video because I, I want to close this video and make sure that we uh, leave you on a good footing for being able to do some data analysis for CATA. And honestly, I'm if you're in the class, you can take a look at the spreadsheets, which I'm, which I'm going to share with you so you can reverse engineer them. And if you are not in the class, feel free to reach out to me and uh, ask lots of good questions about um, how to do this type of analysis. It's it's really powerful. It's a lot of fun. And honestly, the more you get to know Excel, the more your life's going to get better. <laughs> I can't stress this enough. Data analysis is fantastic. All right. Take care. And we'll talk to you again real soon.